Good morning. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Good to have you with us on a Monday. I know it's a Monday. Where the heck did the weekend go? It just seemed like it was Friday the other day. Uh, I've got a new co-host joining me this morning. We've been waiting for her to join us. It seems like forever now. Diana Barrero Borgos is joining us. Diana, good to see you. First things first, congratulations on your new position. You're now the communications director, director of communications for HCC's Southeast College. Good morning and congrats. Thank you, Todd. Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be here. I was telling everybody I couldn't wait and I couldn't be fast enough here at uh, Up to the Minute and be co-hosting with you. I've been watching this show for a very long time now, for the eight years that I've been in HEC, and now being the Director of Communications for HEC Southeast, I'm just honored to be with you guys. So thank you so much for having me. Well, we're honored to have you. We've been thinking about getting you on the show for a while, been, been waiting, you know, and, and it's good to have you finally on the show. I want to ask you about your background because celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, which is going on right now. That is correct. I am so excited about this month. The different nationalities were celebrating the Hispanic culture. And yes, my background is colorful, spicy, um, just Everything that embodies the Hispanic culture, it's um, it's a celebration of colors and cultures and food. Uh, I encourage everybody to go out there and go find a, a Hispanic place that you haven't tried. You'll be quite amazed of the different uh, taste and, and spiciness that is out there for you to enjoy. And we feature a number of those restaurants here on Up to the Minute. In fact, tomorrow is Tasty Tuesday, so you might want to tune in for that as well. And I'm right. Colombian. So you, you okay. need to go well, have some empanadas or bandeja paisa or something like that. You will I'm love it. That. <laughs> I'm all about that. Okay, Diana, um, we want to thank everyone watching us on Facebook Live this morning. You can watch us uh, just about every morning, 10 a.m., live on Facebook. Watch it later on YouTube. And, Diana, they can catch us on social media and HCC TV. That, that is correct, Todd. Uh, we are live on Houston Community College District Facebook page, not HCC. Um, we're also on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and HCC TV at noon at 5 and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. Okay, Diana, stick around because you're going to be interviewing this next guest. Cynthia Lundgren is the director of medical, uh, the medical assistant program at Coleman College of Health Sciences. Cindy, good to see you again. You've got some great news as our uh, program has been ranked second nationwide uh, as the best online school. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, so we're looking forward to hearing all about that accomplishment and everything you got going on at Coleman. Stick around. We'll be with you in about 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to kick things off. It's Mental Health Monday, and we're welcoming a fitness expert that helps her clients with their mind and body to overcome diabetes, depression, and more. Catherine Franzmeyer is a health coach and diabetes life coach for Catherine Franzmeyer Health and Wellness, and she's our Mental Health Monday guest. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Todd, and happy Monday to everybody. What better day than Monday to start with your health journey? Let's get going. Right. So we've got, we want to talk to you about learning more about the, how the mind and body could work to improve mental health. Now, first things first, you're a health and wellness coach. What exactly does that mean to be a health coach? So a health coach, uh, really, Todd, is someone who guides someone personally through their health journey. What are their goals? Just getting to a better place, habit formation, um, looking at where they are now, where do they want to be, um, and just guiding them through nutrition, movement, um, uh, sleep, stress is a big one, and other aspects of their life. And just looking at the whole picture and just getting a snapshot and then taking them to the next level. Yeah, I know you work a lot with diabetics and other health who are people of other health issues. But first, let's talk about how nutrition can can affect our mental well being. How does that work? Well, nutrition obviously is eighty um, percent of what you eat is going to be the um, composition of your body. As every cell in your body, your brain, your body, like every organ, 
And um, a lot of people don't understand that <clears throat> their gut biome, like really their gut system, their stomach, their intestines and what they eat and their uh, the nutrients they take in um, is going to affect, you know, the health of their gut, which actually um, people, researchers call it their first brain because that part of your body affects how your brain is functioning. Is it anxiety and depression um, and all these other mental health, you know, disorders because the large part of serotonin, the most of the serotonin, which is, you know, obviously the hormone that helps you feel um, content and um, not as anxious, um, is produced in your gut. So if your gut's not balanced through your nutrition and, um, you know, your lifestyle factors, then your brain is going to be affected. I know you work with people on inflammation. Mm -hmm. How does that affect the body? And obviously, is that caused by the foods that we eat? Oh, I love talking about inflammation. I, I write about it. I talk about it. I just, I just, I, I want everyone to understand it because it's so important for everyone to know their level of inflammation in their body. Even though you might feel great, there's still some, there still could be some chronic inflammation and inflammation really is the root cause of all disorders. It's, uh, you know, gut disorders like PCOS, it's chronic fatigue, autoimmune, um, diabetes, and even cancer. So it's really, uh, if you have, you know, and I'll do this real quickly, but um, there, it's really important to know your omega-6 to your omega-3 ratios. Your omega-6, you know, you stub your toe, inflammation kicks in. Inflammation is really important in the body. And that's just, you know, then it clears up with the omega-3 fatty acids. Um, if you have too much omega-6, which is in your diet um, from things like seed oils and just like an unbalanced diet, processed foods, a lot of processed grains, you're going to have a lot of omega-6 and not enough omega-3. So you're going to have this, this chronic fire burning in your body and you may not even know and then down the road um then your health can be affected you hear a lot about um with a healthy diet they say it's whole grain whole grain foods um in your opinion whole grain foods are they as healthy as they're uh, as they're uh, put up to be I like to take people off grains entirely um, if they're having some health issues and then introducing it back in gradually. And obviously very um, high quality grains, you know, whole grains that are organic. Um, people think of grains in general as, you know, grains are good. We've been cultivating for, for 20,000 years, but a lot of the grains in our food, they've been hybridized. They have a lot of chemicals sprayed on them. The way they're stored causes, causes mycotoxins, mold in the body, throws the body off. So I like to kind of, you know, especially with diabetics, get them to the majority of their carbohydrates, hair fruits and vegetables that are in season and go into more of a protein diet and higher fat, higher quality fat diet, but just really the carbohydrates and uh, being from a natural source and not a processed source. You work with type two diabetics. What have you found out about their moods and how it can be affected? Is it something that can be affected by food, by inflammation, a uh, combination of both? You know, it's really, um, it's a combination of everything. And um, with, for example, I had a client who was a workaholic. And so he would eat late and he ate processed and he was always tired, but he, you know, he just had this really, he was an executive. He just had this crazy schedule. Um, and so a lot of, so then that causes weight gain, um, a lot more sedentary weight gain. Um, diabetes can be thin and they can also be overweight, but when you tend to go, um, tend to gain weight, that changes your hormonal response. You have hormones in your adipose tissue, in your fat tissue. So that I found with a lot of my clients, they have some anxiety. A lot of them have a lot of depression. Um, people that are severely type 2 diabetic that are on their medications and then they're on other medications. And then that creates all these, this host of like um, mental disorder. And so, you know, just losing the weight, um, really, you know, your brain needs to have a really clean, Toxin free diet, or we can't be, get around, get away from toxins, but you know, just something that is, you're not adding to it because it's obviously it, it creates the mental issues. If someone is not diabetic and they want to determine, hey, am I, do I have a lot of inflammation? I head in that direction. Is there a mm -hmm. test they can do? And how does that work? There is a test, um, and I encourage everybody to take it. I take it regularly. I have my friends and family, and my clients take it regularly. Um, and it's just looking at your fatty acid profile. It's your omega six, like I said, which is can, uh, too high, can cause inflammation, or you know, what's your level of omega three, which needs to be really in balance with your omega six. So it's just a simple um, at home test, which I do with my clients, and then I can look at their fatty acid profile and determine you know what foods are working, what foods aren't working, what's their level of inflammation. Uh, so it's super simple, and um, but it's really knowing what's going on in your body and monitoring it regularly with this this at home test. So that's I found that's worked really well for me and my clients. 
What are some, uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left, but what are some of the tips that you could give people right away that would make a difference mm -hmm. in their health? Well, I'm going to say the proverbial, which is always cut, cut out or cut down on your sugar, right? Um, cut down on your processed carbohydrates, um, but mainly also move more. Um, and I, I encourage my clients and I have to remember this myself after every meal, get up for 10 minutes, take a walk around the block. Um, and importantly, you know, especially after dinner, take the longer walk go around the block, say hi to your dog friends, uh, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And also eating in a shorter window of time, finish your late meal later, uh, earlier in the day, like maybe seven o'clock and then your first meal of the day later in the morning. So you have a longer fasting time because our bodies don't want to always be metabolizing. They want to go through a process called autophagy, clearing out the old cells. So just having a longer fasting window, restricted time eating. Mm -hmm. So those midnight snacks aren't really a good idea, right? Not a like good idea. No, and I, I, I know donuts or cookies or something. No, like no, no. Even a healthy snack is hard on your body um, because you know once you finish eating for the day, you need to your body needs to kind of switch into like I need to start repairing everything from the day. So I find when I eat late in the day, I my sleep is really weird, my dreams are really weird, and I wake up yeah. tired. Uh, Catherine, where can people find you in social media? Um, so my hash or my handle on Instagram is Catherine Fransmeyer and I'm on my website is CatherineWellness.com. And I also have um uh, my Facebook is my name, Catherine Fransmeyer. So please reach out to me if you're interested in taking any of these tests. They're simple, they're inexpensive. I also do A1C testing that you could can do at home to regularly check your blood sugar over time. All right, Catherine, we'll have all your information in our social media post after the show. Good seeing you. Thanks for being here on the Thank show. You. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, Diana, we're going to turn things over to you, and you've got a special guest. Coleman's got some honors they're talking about. Yes, yes, Todd. I am so excited about our next guest. And I want to say thank you to Catherine. Amazing information. But we're going to move on to Cynthia Lundgren. I hope I said your last name correctly. So um, she is the director of the medical assistant program for of Coleman College for Health Sciences. So excited to have you here. Welcome back to the show, Cindy. Let's begin in Kudos to you um, for ranking as one of the best online medical assistant programs in nationwide. Tell us about that. So exciting. Well, our medical assistant program is a, it's a one-year certificate program, and we do have, uh, it's not a completely online. You know, our students are doing hybrid, so they have a, a lot of the classes that are online, but they also have to come to a laboratory and they practice their skills. Uh, they are checked off and then they are eligible to complete their certificate and then get out and be employed. So it is a one year uh, certificate program. Students do a practicum, which is for 240 hours. And usually at that practicum site is where they are hired. Um, they also will take a credentialing exam and the credentialing e exam is um, at a testing center, or they may go ahead and take it, uh, the test at home now. And just this past summer, our graduates from the program, our pass rate was 96%. So uh, we are so excited about that, that our students are graduating, they're passing their credentialing exam, and they are hired because medical assistants are in such big demand right now. Great information. This is amazing. I get to go to the stores uh, once in a while and they see HCC and they ask me about medical assistance and how can we get in touch. And um, But tell me a little bit about what do medical assistants really do? What's the nature of their work uh, as a medical assistant? Well, medical assistants are the ones that will um, greet you on the phone. They're also the ones that will um, be able to set up for the telehealth medicine now because, um, you know, a lot of the doctor's offices are seeing patients remotely. So medical assistants assist with that. Then the uh, medical assistant will also room patients. They will take their vital signs. They'll prepare them for the physical examination. They will also uh, draw blood. They will do EKGs. They will also assist in any type of procedures that the physician has them uh, perform there. They also make appointments. They will do insurance processing. They'll do the, the bookkeeping, accounts payable, uh, inventory supplies, um, you know, put things into the electronic medical record, do medical scribing. 
Um, you know, they had, can do both what's called clinical, which is the back office, and then they also do administrative, which is the front office. So they're pretty much, you know, uh, jacks of all trades, pretty much because they can rotate anywhere in the office that the uh, providers need for them to do or to work. And so they are uh, very uh, important because they can just do pretty much everything in the, uh, the clinical setting. That is amazing. It sounds like a dream job, not only for uh, the employees, for the job seekers themselves, but for the employers. Uh, we need a jack of all trades. So uh, where do medical assistants find the jobs? Where could they go? Well, you know, the majority of the time, you know, the medical assistant will find their employment at the clinical site where they've done their practicum, because at the clinical sites, they get to kind of like, you know, try before they buy, you know, to determine whether or not this particular um, student is going to be responsible, has a good skill set, and can get along with the staff. So, you know, they're there for a length of time, like I said, 240 hours. And this could be at a, a, um, a hospital-based clinic. It could be at a surgery center, maybe even a medispa, or maybe at a research lab, or um, a private physician's office. You know, there are as many different areas of medicine. You will also find a clinic or a medical system can work in that particular clinic because of all those different specialties within that um, within the areas. So you know you can um, find your your niche or your place if you like to do maybe work in a pediatric office or maybe you want to work in an OBGYN uh, or maybe you want to work with geriatrics or internal medicine or or um, you know, uh, primary care, um, and it, it, it just all depends on, and our medical assistant students can, um, you know, choose the area that they would like to um, specialize in or work in, and we have affiliates with large institutions like uh, UT, UT Physicians, Memorial Hermann Medical Group, we have also uh, Kelsey Sebo, Baylor College of Medicine, and plus numerous uh, private uh, physicians as well. So that's where our majority of our students are being hired at those practicum sites where they have done their 240 hours. Okay, so now I have to ask you, Cindy, about the money. Uh, <laughs> what is the job market uh, for a medical assistant like? And what is kind of the medium wage? Just talk to me a little bit about that. Well, you know, our medical systems have been in such great demand, especially during the COVID, because, you know, they have been the ones that have been doing the screening. They've been the ones that have been doing the testing. They've also now been the ones to give vaccines. And, of course, with flu, flu come, season coming up, too, they're actually giving the vaccines for the flu as well. Now, because of this big demand, medical systems are making a better salary. So the, the, the currently with the, the larger institutions as well, anywhere between 18 and $26 an hour, the medical systems have been doing really well. Plus some of those institutions have benefits. So, you know, it's it's been a good market for them right now. And um, we are in big demand uh, trying to place those students at those institutions right now. So it's a good uh, job market for the medical system and the pay is comparable. Wonderful. That is great. I know uh, we just got out of COVID-19. Well, we're kind of getting there. I think we're com be coming in, into a new normal. And tell me how, and you kind of answered this already uh, in, in your previous answer, but how has COVID-19 really affected the medical assistant profession? And how can we get more people into this profession? Talk to me a little bit about that. You know, medical assistants are determined, have been determined to be essential personnel. There has been such a large demand because of what they can do in the office and they have such varied tasks. So there's been such a big demand because of COVID, of course. Again, like I mentioned before, you know, the screening, the actual um, testing of the patient, the actual being able to give the, the, the shots as well, you know, for the vaccine. And then we are also uh, working with other institutions that may not have had medical assistance um, before, and now they are wanting medical assistance because of the increased demand for them in the office, again, um, because they can do so many different things. So uh, we are trying to meet that demand. Our program has um, expanded. So we are, you know, have two cohorts of uh, students between um, fall and spring, two cohorts, plus an evening program. So we're trying to meet the demands of those institutions that want our, our uh, credential medical system. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for telling me this. And if there's a student out there or a potential student, how do we get this student into the uh, medical assistant program at HCC? Well, first, they need to become a Houston Community College student. 
and then they need to seek an advisor. And then our medical system program requires that they do a college testing. So they have to test for TSI. And then there are two prerequisite courses. They need to have their English composition. And then we also require that they take HPRS 1201, which is Introduction to Healthcare. So they need to find out, you know, do a little exploration in that course to see whether or not health field is for them or health sciences is for them. And then they can be currently enrolled in those two courses. And then they would need to submit a separate application for uh, Coleman Health Sciences because the majority of the programs at uh, Coleman College requires a separate admission because we have selective admission into our programs. Okay, so I have one more minute, but I do have to ask you, what is unique about the HCC Medical Assistant Program at HCC, and how can we get in touch with you? Well, I think that our medical assistant program is unique in that uh, we have a great uh, group of faculty that are from uh, various backgrounds, but have all concentrated and all become uh, certified medical assistant or credentialed medical assistants themselves. So that makes it really neat because they come not only from the workplace, but they also know where the students have been as far as you know, taking the credentialing exam and what you need to prepare to be able to be a credentialed medical assistant. Plus we are in the, the mothership, I say the mothership at Coleman College. Uh, we are in the Texas Medical Center so, you know, where else would you want to come for your training? People come from all over around the world for their health care and their treatment. So where else would you want to come to be a medical assistant? Come to Coleman College um, in the Texas Medical Center. Cindy, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you again in, in our program. And Todd, take it away. All right. Thanks, Diana and Cindy. And uh, we've got some transfer affairs and some announcements to go through. Diana, you, uh, you've got something head happening now at the uh, east side campus coming up very shortly. Yes. Yeah, so we have some um, transfer fairs, like you said, Todd. Um, students can join at HCC at one of the many campuses hosting fall 2022 college transfer fairs from October 3rd through the 12th, where they can hear from over 60 universities speaking directly to them. Uh, this is from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday, October 3rd, North Line and East Side Campus. Yay, go Southeast. Uh, Tuesday, October 4th, Central and Stafford. More transfer, transfer fairs follow that week and the next. Check the district uh, Facebook page or link in our post after the show. Okay, and Diana, there's a small business success series happening. HCC's small business success series starts October, uh, in October, with 10 two hour interactive Zoom sessions. They're all free. That's right, free, thanks to our partnership with Wells Fargo. 2 30 to 4 30 p.m., they're happening Tuesdays and Thursdays, October the 11th through November the 10th. You can check our post after the show, get more details on that. And we've got some community and online education programs available as well, Diana. Yes, yeah, so Todd, we have the community and online educator return. HEC will be offering virtual online sessions for its community learning and its out, um, out online continuing education programs. Community learning provides personal development, enrichment, uh, recreation, and academic workshops for youth, adults, and seniors 50 and plus. I don't know if that really 50, that I don't know if that's constitute as seniors, but okay, we'll go with that. Um, the online Wow, group, yeah, you're right about that. I just thought about that. that means uh, I'm, I'm getting close senior. to that number 50. I don't know if I consider wow. myself a senior just quite yet. Um, yeah. But the online continuing education program offers courses in career training, certification preparation, and professional development. This is going to be from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. October 12th on WebEx. So check our post after the show for more details. Wow, I just noticed that and I'm really, it really deflates my whole week now. <laughs> I'm already a senior. All right. I know. I saw it. I was okay. like, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Self-fragmentation, faculty exhibitions going on, the works of adjunct faculty member Angel Castellan uh, called being featured in uh, the faculty arts exhibition of 
HCC's Northwest College. It consists of works on paper and paintings and captures fragments of the artist's own identity through portraiture and imagery taken from everyday life. It's uh, through November 4th at HCC's Northwest Spring Branch Gallery. And Diane, I want to skip down uh, because we want to remind everyone that registration is still underway. You can you still get uh, yes. registered. They're shorter fall classes, but they're still available, Diana. Absolutely. So there's more classes. Come and join us and even shorter fall classes. I like to take shorter classes. That's just me. But a uh, second start has begun, but students can still register for even more intensive sessions. Yes, the word there, intensive, uh, beginning in October and even November. So it's worth checking out HCC schedules with the same co um, course options online anytime, online on a schedule, hybrid. Hey, we have some good options here in person in hybrid lab. Um, so just come and check us out for registration to all of our programs. Please go to hccs.edu backslash apply. Okay, apply today. Make sure you do so. Tomorrow's Tasty Tuesday, and we've got JoJo Wang, who will be returning to the show to talk about another one of her restaurants, Spicy Girl. I ordered from them a few weeks ago. Phenomenal. Ate at one of her restaurants over the weekend. That was great, too. We'll talk about that tomorrow. And the highly coveted You and Family Endowment will congratulate another of the recipients tomorrow. Diana, hey, you did a great job. It's great to Thank finally you. have you on the show. <laughs> I had such an awesome uh just time with you guys. I, I thought it's always a pleasure uh, being able to co-host with you. And again, this was a dream come true. Finally did it. And I hope to be invited again. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we could work that out with you now. You'll, you'll be invited way too many times. You'll be like, I'm too busy, guys. I'm too busy. <laughs> we look forward to having you on the show again, Diana. Thank you so much, Todd. Appreciate it. Happy Hispanic right. Heritage Month. Yep, and happy uh, happy Hispanic Heritage Month to all of you out there. We're back live tomorrow, 10 a.m., right here for Up to the Minute. See you then. Enfoca tu futuro con HCC. Inscríbete hoy para las clases de primavera. How prepared is your family if disaster shows up at your doorstep? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov slash plan before they show up. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, Let's go. you'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes! Make a plan today. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. It's really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Kids will be kids, which just goes to say, kids will be curious. They get into everything, everything. If there's a loaded firearm in the house, they could get their hands on that too. Keeping firearms locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition in a place inaccessible to kids can help keep your loved ones safe from family fire. Safe gun storage saves lives.